Hi guys, I'm Shane, and in today's video I'm going to be showing how you can make a handmade pottery material in Keyshot. So, let's get into it. So if you head over to my website, you'll be able to download the project file for free. You can use this to follow along with what we're doing, and this way it'll be on the same model. You can also view the finished material graph, as well as my scene setup, including lighting and image effects. In this tutorial, we're going to be using the material graph a lot, and apologies in advance because it does get a bit messy, but I do try my best to try and organize it whilst I go through. The model is based off a match striker by Farmhouse Pottery, but the material is based off some of their other collection, as I wanted to practice having the bumps running throughout. So the first thing we'll do to start is create the bumps running throughout using displacement. First you're going to add a mesh texture and if you double click on the texture and press C you'll be able to view the mapping information. You'll see here that this is completely wrong so change the center on to part and change the mapping type to cylinder. We'll then click move texture and fit it to the Y axis. You then want to change your shape to line. Change the shape angle to 90 degrees so the lines are running horizontally. If you then right click and go into geometry you'll want to add a displace node. Then connect your mesh to this and click execute geometry node without changing any of the settings. You'll see what happens here. It doesn't look great. So if we go and adjust some of the settings and bring the displacement height down to one millimeter, then we get a better idea of what's going on. As you can see here, we've got a very sharp transition between the lines. This is because we haven't smoothed the transition and it goes straight from absolute white to absolute black. The way displacement works is absolute white will be 100% of your displacement height and black will be 0%. So we need to adjust our mesh to better suit the product we're trying to recreate. We'll do this by reducing the shape, width and height to 2 mil and the pattern spacing also to 2 mil. You'll see this goes absolute black so if we add some fall off we'll start to see the lines appear. What this does is smooth the transition from black to white, which means that we should get more rounded off bumps running throughout the product rather than the sharp transition. We then want to add a little bit of distortion and slightly increase the distortion scale. This will mean that we don't have perfectly straight lines. As this pottery would be a handmade product, it wouldn't be completely perfect. And these imperfections are what really sells a good material. If we then execute our geometry node again, you can see the effect this has. This is much closer to what we're trying to achieve, but it's still not perfect. You can see there's some artifacts, so if we reduce the triangle size and increase the max triangles, this should sort this out. Again, this is starting to look better, but it's still too extreme. So reduce your displacement height to 0.2 millimeters. And that's the main displacement finish there. Now we're going to move on to the color of the material. So if you right click and add a curvature node, and double click and press C again to view the color information. The curvature node allows you to apply different colors to the curved parts of the model. We need to make sure that we untick radius and pixels as this will change your radius every time you zoom in and zoom out with your camera. Reduce the radius and adjust the cutoff until you can just see the color coming through. We want the negative curvature and zero curvature to be the same color and we want to adjust the color of the positive curvature. I've given it a desaturated blue color as this is similar to our reference image. And then I gave my positive curvature the same blue, but darkened down. This just adds that little bit of detail to the outside of our curvature. We then want to right click and add a spots texture. If you link this to your negative and zero curvature, then this will control all of our background color. You then want to reduce your scale, increase distortion, and reduce the density of the spots so we just have a few. This is a very subtle effect but these spots appear on the products if you look at the photography online. Again this is a stylistic choice you can increase the density if you want. You then change your background color to match the color that we had before and change the color which will control the spot color to a desaturated brown. We're then going to add a little bit of variance to the positive curvature by using a fractal noise texture. So increase the scale and set your color one and two to the color that we used earlier, but make sure that color two is a little bit darker. This will just create a little bit of variance so that it's not a flat color throughout. Next, we're going to want to combine this texture that we've just made with the curvature with another. So you'll want to right click, go to utilities, 
and add a color composite node and connect your curvature to the source and right click and add a brush radial texture to the background. If we double click and press C, you'll see what this does. It adds these black, gray and white stripes which run throughout the model. If we add a little bit of noise, just so it's not completely perfect again, and connect this to the background. If we change the blend mode, you can see the effect that this has. It looks quite nice on overlay. If I come out, you can see here the effect looks really cool. And it's actually the effect I used on these renders here, but it's not quite what we're going for. So if we change it to soft light, it will be much more subtle. And all this will do is add some variance to the tones of blue running throughout our model. Again, to add a little bit more variance, we're going to add another fractal noise, increase the scale. And as this is controlling the black colors, we want to set color one to black and color two to a very dark gray. Duplicate this, make sure to untick sync. And as this is connected to the white, we want color one to be white and color two to be a very light gray. And as you can see here, when I view the mapping information, it just adds a little bit of imperfection to these stripes running throughout. You can go a bit heavier on imperfections when you're doing ceramics and pottery as they are handmade materials, so they wouldn't be perfect at all. Next, we're going to add yet another noise fractal and connect it to the bump. This simulates some bumps on the edge of the surface. So we'll increase the scale and reduce the bump height so it's very subtle again. We'll then right click on this connection and add a bump add utility. This allows us to combine more than one bump map on our material. So we'll use this to connect our spots and add this as a bump map as well. And that is pretty much the main material done. So now we want to add the stony material on the bottom half of the product. To do this, we're going to use a color gradient to control our displacement. You want to change center on to part again, go to into move texture and rotate at 90 degrees. You then want to bring the white closer to the black to reduce the fall off and also reduce the scale. We still want to keep a little bit of fall off in the transition so that it's not a hard line. So a scale of 10 works good here. You'll then want to connect this to the background and you can see the effect it has there on the mesh. And as black means that no displacement height will be active, when you refresh your displacement node, it gets rid of all the displacement on the bottom half of the product. We then want to add the material to this part of the product. So if you add a plastic material and connect it as a label, we can then use this same color gradient to control the opacity of where this material shows up on our product. So connect it to the opacity and click the connection, right click and add a color invert to flip it so that it's on the right part of our product. We then want to add a little bit of color to this. I use the concrete curb texture in Keyshot. So if you go into your textures tab, drag this into material graph and connect it to your diffuse channel. As you can see here, the mapping's gone a bit dodgy. So again, change it to cylinder, center on to part, move the texture and map it to the Y axis. We then want to reduce the contrast as well. Next, we're going to add a little bit of bump information. So drag this texture into the bump channel as well and reduce the bump height. Right click on the connection and add another bump add utility and then add another fractal noise texture. But this time we're going to give it a scale of 0.5 and we're really going to bump up the bump height so we get that rough looking imperfect stone material. If I reduce my denoise here, you can see the effect that's having. It's coming together quite nicely. So now we just want to add a bit more detail to the transition between these two materials. So if you add a color composite to your color gradient, we can then connect our concrete texture to the background and change the blend mode to overlay. And this just roughens up the border there. But it's got color information to it, so we want to remove that by adding a color to number node on this connection. This will convert it to grayscale and also allows us to control the intensity of the texture using our input from and input to. You'll then want to connect this color composite to the background of our mesh texture so that it affects the displacement as well. So that is pretty much our material done. Something I should have actually done at the beginning of the process was add some roughness. So I'm gonna add 0.1 to the roughness. And I'm going to use a granite texture to control the roughness of our glossy material. I'm going to set the color to white and reduce the scale. I'll then connect it to the roughness and add another color to number, which allows us to control the blacks and the whites. 
I'm going to bring the output to all the way down to 0.03 and the output from to 0.02. This seems like a tiny difference, but when you're working with these small numbers, the smaller margins make a bigger difference. So the last thing we're going to do is just add a little bit more variance to the color information of this bottom material here. So what we're going to do is add another color composite into the connection that connects the concrete texture to the diffuse. And we're going to use our radial brush texture that we made earlier, connect that to the background and change the blend mode to screen. We'll then reduce the background alpha to 0.2, just so it's a very subtle effect. So that is our material finish. I've just tidied up the material graph here so you can take a screenshot or you can download the project file on my website to have a look through the final thing. Thanks for watching. As always, be sure to leave any questions you have in the comments below. Make sure you visit my website for free rendering resources and check me out on Instagram at Shane Spence Design. Let me know what other videos you'd like to see and like and subscribe for more.